DJ Leroy. Night Watchmen. Once again, it is a show sure enough Monday in the city that we Monday love. In the city, brother. Or more precisely, remember, the village of Harlem. Mm-hmm. The village, yes. Yeah. So, you know what? We're going to actually talk about some village things. You know how people come out when there's, uh, like, it's a festival, it's a feast, and they mm-hmm. come out and they share the goods, the bounty. That's mm-hmm. what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, you know what? The Uptown Night Market. What do you think? It sounds like, like a plan. Well, uh, like I said, you know that they, uh, of course, it is a thing that actually celebrates cuisine mm-hmm. and culture. So you know what? We we definitely, it could not happen if we By the way, ha- you know what? I love both cuisine and culture. So this <laughs> is, is going to work out well. <laughs> well, well, well if, if you do think that, would you, would you like to bring out the one, the only, Marco Shalman? Would you like to do that? Marco! Marco! What's up, guys? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely, my brother. Like like I said, wh- why didn't others think about this beforehand, a night watchman? Why did it take Marco, you know, to actually travel the globe mm-hmm. and then actually plant his flag in Harlem? But actually, no, he first planted that daggone flag where? In the BX, baby. So, Marco, <laughs> please do tell us. Uh, no, your journey when we come back, okay? Because we also have somebody who I'm really, really excited. And Night Watchman, this is the first time here mm-hmm. on live television. What do you think, man? Let's bring her out. Hey, uh, we must bring out the one, the only, Andrielle Jackson. Give it Good up. Morning. Yes. <laughs> and we got, uh, am I saying it correctly, Arnie and Ebony catering? Yes, you are. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. Welcome, y'all. All right. So, uh, Night Watchman, let's get it popping, man. Let's find out about this guy, Marco. We've heard a lot about him, but we want to know Uptown Night Market. We want to find wait, wait out. Wait a second. We, uh, we, 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 we have somebody else in. in somebody else has joined us. That's she right. Has. That's then right. Night Watchman, bring her out. The lovely and talented Gina is in the building. Gina! Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Indeed. Okay, so of course, uh, now uh, we're talking about Down East Lobster. Yes, sir. All right, all right. See, now I know that, uh, uh, Marco, I'm, we're coming out there because my wife Karen loves some lobster. So we're coming out, okay, yeah. big time. <laughs> so you please have to uh, tell us, uh, uh, Marco, the journey. Tell us about first Bronx Night Market and then how we have now an Uptown Night Market. Do tell. Um. It's, it's kind of funny because uh, even though the Bronx Night Market has been up for 40 years, the idea of Uptown Night Market actually came before that uh, when I used to live in uh, St. Nick uh, up in Harlem. Mm. And, mm. you know, um, the, the story goes like this, especially in that area. About 10 years ago, there was uh, 15 to 10 years ago, there was a restaurant right in, right in the area over there, 138, called Kovo. And oh. it's a, do you remember? No. Oh, no, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Italian place. And that was my Sunday place. Every Sunday, I used to go over there and have that eggplant pasta that they have. It was the best Ooh. in the city. Yes. And when they closed it down, you know, I mean, that, that area was popping for a minute. Popping. Kovo, and, Taylor. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Body. It, oh, very it nice. It kind of felt like it was going to be the next South Seaport, you know, mm-hmm. and it's kind of moving into the direction in like really kind of cool hangout places. And then it just died, you know, and Kobo mm-hmm. closed. And I was upset. And I, and, I, and I kept thinking, like, you know, this somebody needs to revive this area. You know, um, things worked out the way they did. We kind of ended up moving to the Bronx at that period of time and opened the Bronx night market. But but that stays in my mind, you know. And, and we were looking the entire time for the right partner to do that. And and later on, when I met Zihad Ramadan from the West Island Development Corporation. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. You know, and the engine that he is... You know, we kind of set up a time and a date, and and we went running with that. You know, mm, and, and excellent. I gotta tell you, this has been an amazing experience over here in Harlem, where I kind of currently live. You know, it's been amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, certainly, welcome to the neighborhood, Andriel. Yes. Do tell, tell us your journey. Oh, our journey is is that we've been we've been cooking out of the house for like fifteen plus years. Mm. Um, in Harlem, on the east side, Lexington Avenue, one twenty ninth and Lexington. Oh wow! And we have a townhouse there. Ebony still lives there, so 
we were cooking out of the house. We had a large following. The whole neighborhood would come and eat with us. Um, people from other neighborhoods, people from out of state would come and eat with us because we did a lot of soul food and seafood. Mm. And then at some time we would do the so we would do the um sidewalk cafe where we would do like shrimps, crabs, uh, uh, food uh, and stuff like that. So um in 2020, I woke up and I called Ebony. I said, Ebony, it's time to buy the food truck. And nice. we purchased it. It like literally fell into our laps. We purchased it. Uh, we started working at our jobs. I was working at my job for 14 years. Wow. And last year it was I was done with it. I wanted to do this. And ever since we started our grand opening, we had over 500 plus people come to the grand opening. Wow. Amazing. Like the whole Harlem came. Mm -hmm. And um, it was amazing. And it's been working out ever since. And me and Ebony, we're sisters. We're blood sisters. Same mother, mm -hmm. same father. She's a year in. Mm -hmm. 11 months older than me and <laughs> together that's my best friend and we just you know we do what we do nice. and people love our, food. our food is really good so beautiful beautiful and and uh, uh like me you are also the baby i see yes i am the baby <laughs> up to the babies baby <laughs> <laughs> so so gina do tell lobster Hi. hello yes. hey Yes. So, um, I mean, even though I consider myself a New Yorker now, I've lived here for more than half my life. Um, mm. I'm from Maine originally. Um, so, you know. Well, that's well lobster, you, that's right. You, what yeah. other place but Maine? Lobster Go ahead. paradise. That's, that's what we're known <laughs> for. So, you know, I grew up eating lobster. That was just like a regular thing. And when I moved to New York, I moved here when I was 17, back in 2005. Um, there's not a lot of great lobster roll places here so you know i went to school for uh business and i knew mm -hmm. i wanted to open up my own place i love cooking i love mm -hmm. feeding people and so that's just how it happened um about five years ago i started i just did like small pop-ups um in the city mm -hmm. and i've grown to where i am now i'm working with marco i do the bronx night market uptown and i actually just bought a truck myself Oh, ah, congratulations. Yeah. All right. I'm nervous, I'm scared, but I'm very excited. Um, honestly, COVID kind of like pushed me to take it to the next level. I had been bartending for the past 12 years, so I've always been in the industry, but COVID was like, girl, you got to get it together. Let's focus on your business. And here I am. So. Be beautiful, okay. beautiful. Welcome. I, I definitely have to say, uh, the one thing about, of course, and Marco, you know this, Doing an outdoor festival has its challenges. So <laughs> certainly we know this year, do tell us, besides, of course, Mother Nature, what have uh, some of the other challenges been? I mean, I got to be honest with you, the, the biggest challenge is Mother Nature. You know, and, <laughs> and, you know uh, we had a rough start for the season, you know, back in uh, July, uh, supposed to be the, the grand opening of, mm -hmm. of the series. And that was the day, July 8th, that was the day of the that big flooding that New yep. York experienced like no other, you know. Mm -hmm. And we, we we try to keep our cool all the way in, and we thought it's going to be fine, you know. It's going to be like a heavy rain, but, you know, we rain or shine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but uh, Mother Nature decided uh, she's going to do something else for us that day. Uh, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I think it worked in our advantage. I, I got to be honest with you because we were able to kind of realize – what kind of vendors are going to be there, and and we had, we we had a little bit more time to to promote ourselves. But the biggest important thing, I think, you know, this is kind of kudos because we partner with you know some of Harlem's uh, legends, including like the Harlem uh, Arts Alliance and mm -hmm. Harlem Week for the mm -hmm. next event, which I think kind of really pushed us forward in, in in people to you know recognize that. So. Even though it was challenging, even though it got canceled, you know, it cost us a lot of money to cancel that first event. Mm -hmm. But I think like it worked in our advantage. You know, I'm, I'm the I'm the kind of glass half uh, full person, <laughs> and I'm trying to. I'm always positive. I'm always looking about like you know how can we be better or what can we you know what how can we move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it helped us. But in general, I want to tell you, like, this year, unlike the last five years, has been very challenging. Like, we have rain almost every weekend, winds, you know. Um, global warming is a thing. I don't care what it is. <laughs> we feel it on our bodies and in our pockets. But all in all, you know, we're blessed and we're happy to be around, you know, still doing our thing. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and one thing I certainly did hear in the early part of this uh, conversation uh, Andrielle and Gina, food trucks. 
the the future of food dis- distribution will it be bricks and mortar an actual location or will it be a mobile unit do tell andrielle uh, why why a food truck as opposed to let's say a bricks and mortar uh storefront i think it's going to be a lot of, a lot more food trucks on you know on the streets because mm-hmm. um it's just the overhead is is cheap. It's, you know, we don't spend a lot of money. It's like basically gas and parking lot fees and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. you know, you want to be able to move around to different locations because if this location is not working, you can go over here. You know, you can sell. You can get to more people better than a brick and mortar because people could walk past you and not notice your store. So mm-hmm. I think a food truck is way more better. And I get a lot of people asking me about it, so I can see this industry is gonna grow. Absolutely, Gina. No, yeah, I agree completely. Um, yeah, it's so much more cost efficient. Um, it's it's not as big of a, a commitment, I suppose, because you don't have to sign a leash. You don't have to worry about that. And honestly, right now, I, I have a lot of friends in the industry still that work in um, bars and restaurants. And because of COVID and like, especially in New York, because of the vaccine mandate, they've seen a lot of drop in clientele. So not as many people mm. are going out and not going inside if they don't have the vaccine. So this is like an alternative option for people. And, you know, like she said, yeah, you can move around. So you can go to your customers. Like you don't have to specifically be in Manhattan. You can go to Queens, you can go to Brooklyn. So it's really expands your uh, your clientele. So, yeah. Yeah. Curtis, I gotta tell you, there's another point that I've been talking to a lot of like industry people lately, uh, that with all the restriction in the outdoor dining, what happens with restaurants, you know, even though they were suffering for a moment, but all of them kind of increase their capacity and the seats by double or triple that without mm-hmm. actually upgrading the service, upgrading any of the kitchens in the back, mm-hmm. which people felt a little bit, you know, I don't want to say cheated, but kind of cheated, you know, from the mm-hmm. service where you get like the food vendors that have trucks or whatnot really hustle and really take pay attention to everything that they do every portion just comes out of the truck you know you know that's that's got to be your first and last portion it's got to be it's it's got to be representing who you are and i think people the, the communities appreciate that because they understand where they're going to get the good food and for affordable prices and i think that's why food trucks is not going anywhere if anything that become that is going to be the next thing gotcha yeah. Night Watchman, what were you got about to say? Well, I just wanted to also for our listeners and viewers to share what the location is for, for Uptown Nights for those who don't know it. Marco? Oh, me, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh it's in, in uh we located in in an historical you know amazing location uh, underneath the arches of Harlem on 12th Avenue and 135th Street. Uh mm-hmm. if, if people remember where the fairway is underneath the yep. arches so shelter from like weather, you know, so mm-hmm. if it, in case of like wind, snow, not that I'm expecting snow, but I just wait, I just opened my mouth, right? Like oh. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't it, put it like, in the atmosphere. That's I'm right. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm retracting everything. I'm taking it back. <laughs> That's it, it's gone. But uh, 12, West, West 135th and 12th Avenue, underneath the arches, uh, the location lends itself so beautifully. We bring the lights up. You know, it, it is just like amazing kind of view to see that. It just lends itself. I remember seeing that for the first time in a movie. Like, I think it was one of the Batman movies, and, and now we get to do this. <laughs> so, like, it's, so it's great. Very nice. Very nice. And, uh, Ladies, I have a question to ask. So I'm in West Harlem. Certainly we do know that during the lockdown, the, the restaurants, the storefronts were closed. Uh, but one of uh, the restaurants that I frequented a lot uh, by Lauren Bree Lynch, which was uh, uh, Harlem Public, the Honeywell, and the Wallace, right? One thing that she did do that she didn't do beforehand, she delivers now. Mm-hmm. What, she so, yep. <laughs> so what adjustments have you guys had to make? Is there delivery service or do I have to come to the food truck? Do tell Adrielle. Um, You can come to the food truck, but we're also on Grubhub and we're on Seamless. So you can definitely have your food delivered to you. Absolutely. Uh, And we just got on Grubhub maybe a month ago, a month and a half now. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gina, do tell. Um. For now, I'm just, you know, you got to show up to where I'm at. Um, During the lockdown and quarantine, I was doing deliveries, Mm -hmm. um, but it just wasn't substantial enough for me. I didn't have enough people who who knew about it. Um, Mm -hmm. So for now, 
You okay. gotta put up. But gotta people can find time. you on your Instagram, right? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I always put where I'm gonna be on my Instagram, so people can follow me. You're Beautiful. Man. So, so now, Marco, uh, these wonderful uh, women are they also at the Bronx Night Market? So, first of all, I want to say something about uh, you know this amazing, you know, talented woman, hardworking mm-hmm. woman. You know, mm-hmm. um, a lot, a lot, not a lot of people know that like you know. I, over 75% of our vendors, you know, and, and partners in this event are f- uh, female-led businesses, you know. Wow. Uh, there is being, you know, there, there is a revolution. There is a momentum over the past few years of us seeing more and more uh, female-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and they're doing amazing. And hard workers, and it's just it's just a pleasure to see that. But, yes, yeah, nice. you know, uh, we, we got the pleasure of meeting Gina a long time ago in the Bronx while working in the Bronx Night Market and Andrea uh, in in uh, in Harlem. But it's becoming, you know, it's just like our family, my mass hospitality is just growing, you know, and we keep working with like amazing people and, and learning. And I wanted to add something, a little bit of a scoop over here, if you don't mind. You know, like you just mentioned about the delivery. Uh, we are working right now with SBS to kind of create like a tool, like New York Food Tour, which is taking wow. like, the experience that we do to different parts of the city with the technology that allows also to do deliveries on everywhere that we reach. You know, it's not going to be available till like April 2022 when we start the next season, but it's something that we already kind of been thinking and working towards like increasing not only taking our experience around the city, but also being allowing people to, to order takeout while we, we go and visit those neighborhoods. So mm. pretty exciting stuff. Beautiful, that's beautiful. Uh, say that again, Andrea. No, I said that sounds great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, one of the things I'm also thinking about, now, while I love, and uh, my home, of course, is West Harlem, right? I'm right, right there, 143rd. I also know that there's an area in East Harlem that absolutely, tell me that you have started some engagement with uh, Uptown Grand Central, Kerry King. So do tell me that there's gonna be an Uptown uh, uh, night market on the east side of Harlem. I mean, I mean, you, you, you're telling all the secrets right now, but uh, <laughs> you know, we, we have started conversation, you know, and one of the areas, uh, you know, one of the areas that is like, we wanted to work together with the city, with Kerry and with the mm-hmm. DOT is right outside of like the Metro North, you know? Oh, uh, excellent. A, excellent. Yeah. Yep. There's an area over there which is gorgeous, but needs a lot of love. It needs a lot mm-hmm. of love. It needs a lot of attention. It needs like aggressive marketing and a good planning and good programming in order to utilize it in the right way. And, you know, and this is something that's been on our mind and we've been working on that for the last couple of months. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of, you know, launch of next year, we'll be able to do that feeling very much like you know it kind of says me a lot of a Fordham vibe you know and Mm -hmm. and that kind of energy because a lot of there's a lot of stakeholders that really really want to take it and see this area goes into the next level so we excited to be in the midst of that you know i mean blessed (laughs) excellent excellent and uh so ladies you you have to let me know now just the uh bronx and uptown night market uh other than that, are you guys open for business or what? Yes, we're open. We're actually open today. We're open on Tuesday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Mm. So we're open today. As soon as we're done with this, I got to pull a mac and cheese out the oven. <laughs> and get done with this so we can get started. We start at 1 o'clock today. So we're mm. on 127th and 8th Avenue right across from Harlem BBQs. We're oh, yeah, there okay. Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Excellent. And, and what's on the menu today, Andrea? I might, I might have to come see you. <laughs> oh, yes, it's the full soulful menu. So today's menu is uh, fried chicken, fried fish, fried shrimp. It's um, baked turkey wings. We have roast pork on the menu. Um, mac and cheese, salad greens, candy, and potato salad, peas and rice. Um, last week, Melba's, she ate with us last week, and she gave what? me such a yes. She gave us such a great review. She said, I she know. said, um, she said the turkey wings are divine, like to die for. She loved mm. the tartar sauce. She said the the potato salad was everything. So we had a really great review with her. So yeah, come. Congratulations yeah. for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, of course, her aunt is considered the queen of soul food. But you know what? 
Melba mm-hmm. does her thing for sure. She does. Well, yes. Yes. And and also it speaks to the fact that um um people in in the food and hospitality in Harlem they support each other. It's it's competitive and that you got to be good to just stay in your spot. But people mm-hmm. just you know generally love and enjoy um, cooking, feeding people. And, and, you know, we have a great appreciation for everybody who goes in this direction because we know it's, it's hard work, it's rewarding, but it's hard work. It's <laughs> hard. Totally, it totally. Mm-hmm. So, so I, Gina. I apologize, guys. I, I didn't hear anything after baked, uh, tur- baked turkey. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I just woke up, you know. Like, oh, I know, right? I'm, like, I'm hungry. Can I <laughs> oh, we're doing a video show right now. My bad. Those well, turkey wings are our signature. So people like really love them. I want to say maybe three, four weeks ago. I don't know if you guys know who Yandy Smith is. Yeah. Um, oh. She hired us yeah. too. She hired us to do her back to school um, book bag drive. So oh, we nice. did that. We fed over 500 people for free. She, wow. she paid us, like, over 500 people was able to come up to the truck and just get food and we just, you know, serve them. But um, yeah, that's our signature. I, we do a lot of good food. I'm very, I'm really proud of what we do. It's a lot of hard work. It's grueling on the body, but it's so rewarding to see people eat the food and really enjoy it. And not only do they enjoy the food, we give a good service. Like we literally engage. We don't just say, oh, okay, what's your order and serve you? It's no, how you doing? How's your day? People really get a good service from us. Love that, love that, love that. So, uh, Gina, do do tell in terms of is it just the Bronx Night Market and Uptown Night Market, or uh, when are you open? So I'm not open yet. Ah. Like I said, I literally, like I literally just bought this truck like three days ago. So it still has that 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 <laughs> that, new, that new, new car smell stuff. type thing. Yeah, this is a new thing for me. Um, I have a lot of locations that I'm interested in. Um, I live in the Heights. I live in Washington Heights. Oh, um, all right. There's Big like up. no lobster places here, so mm-hmm. I'm very excited. Um, I have some spots. Like I know a lot of business owners on Dykeman, mm-hmm. um, and there's like nothing there, so that's right. The first areas I'm gonna hit up. I'm excited. Um, so yeah, it's a work in progress. So, okay. so, so the best pe- thing people need to do is 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 hit hit you up on Instagram, sign up, you know, follow her on Instagram, and when the truck is ready to roll, they'll know where you are. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Down East Gina, Lobster. Gina, if you have any questions or you want to know anything, you can call me because uh, October 3rd was our one year anniversary. You can right. call me to help you with whatever you need help with. Thank you. I appreciate that because, yeah, I, I'm going to need some guidance, girl. Um, uh, so, 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 <laughs> you <guys have> it. <laughs> you, Marco, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Uh, you, you've created an ecosystem that's also, you see, mentor friendly. You know, Beautiful. it's uh, it, it most of the time it works in my advantage. You know, <laughs> like you know the the people. You know, I I haven't realized that, but about four or five years ago, we realized that like vendors. You know, they get friendly. They talk to each other. They teach each other where to go and buy. You know, do grocery shopping. What mm-hmm. markets are the best one to work? Who what operator is better than the other one? You know. So in one hand, you know, when you do the when you do your stuff right, you know, you, you know, it's going to carry over because they're like a big family. On the mm-hmm. other hand, you gotta, you gotta keep on your toes because if you mess up, you know, everybody going to know about it. Right. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, you, I mean, but it's all good. Up for a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And Marco, that's right. Sometimes we only get one shot at the apple. One that's shot. It. That's it. So, so night watchman, um, what do we want to do? We want to see how we can definitely, we know that it's happening on, uh, the 14th, right? October 14th, yep. Okay. Yeah. Starting 4 p.m. And we try to, you know, we, we tell everybody, like, the, the, the programming starts at 4.30. So if, if you, you know, if you can make it as early as possible, there's a ton of free stuff. There's a ton of giveaways. Uh, amazing performances this time. You know, we have, like, we have a, a group called Citywide, City Love, which is a group of uh, uh, young performers that are doing, like, an ensemble kind of, uh, mm. uh we got uh, Cap- uh captain keith it's coming and doing a bunch of like r&b hip-hop mix with special guests and then we have a, a dj to kind of finish the evening real nice like i said a ton of giveaways and if you're still working you know and you can't make it for maybe it's time to quit 
maybe he's trying to play hooky, you know. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> gotcha, it's worth gotcha. It. <laughs> and I do know, uh, Marco, that uh, – Storm and Norman was also a part of you guys, but uh, he can't me- necessarily make this set. But who you got, DJ Cozy? DJ Cozy is going to play yes. set with some sounds. You know, is uh, you know put it back. DJ, uh, you know, we we we, we love uh, you know Storm and Norman. We love it. You know, mm-hmm. he, he does his thing like nobody else, and he's going to be back for the next one. But you know, obviously DJ Cozy from the crew. You know, he, mm-hmm. you know another Harlem dude who really knows what he's doing. It's you know, it's going to be lit. It, there's, no, <laughs> there's no auto in this guy. It's gonna be lit. <laughs> Beautiful. So let, let's have some. Uh, I guess some, some parting words from you, Andrea. Tell us. Tell us what we can expect in the future from you guys. Um. Well, what you can expect is that we're gonna continue to put out good food and try to hit as many neighborhoods in Harlem and throughout the entire city. But what we're what you're gonna look forward to is just us being present and being on the scene as many scenes as possible excellent excellent gina do tell us what can we expect i mean i'm gonna just piggyback off of her i agree like (laughs) yes she's trying to be everywhere um my goal is though i'm interested in hitting all like all the boroughs um i do want to stay localized obviously because this is my neighborhood to harlem Mm -hmm. but the Bronx too. I have a soft spot for the Bronx. I've been all, all right. For a while, that's... so I, I do know that that's another area that I'm ready to hit. But yeah, just growing, growing my business, growing my brand. Um, hopefully, getting another truck soon. Let's see. Uh-huh. Put that out there. Manifesting. Yes. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. It. Beautiful. So, Marco, besides sending, uh, of course, uh, some beautiful positive energy to the gods. Uh, any closing thoughts? First of all, I want to thank you, Curtis. You know, uh, since we met you, since I met you, you know, I've been getting those introduction emails consistently, like, you know, opening uh-huh. the door to like Harlem and the community in the best way possible. And I got to give you props and credit because, you know, with your help, this is like something that, that allows us to kind of uh, have an easier access and, and, and a smoother entry into Harlem and into the community. Uh, yeah. In addition, you know, like this, this for this one specifically, October 14, we are collaborating uh, with the good people of like the New York City uh, Women's Chambers of Commerce, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Kenya, Ms. Kenya, Agrel, nice. you uh-huh. know, and, and bringing together some of their love of Taste of Harlem event that wasn't able to be uh, produced this year because of restrictions and COVID or whatnot. So we kind of embracing that uh, organization and embracing them into, you know, into what we do just as a show of solidarity with the people of Harlem. You know, I look forward to continuing and, and every event to, to make it better and bigger and celebrate more about, like what we said, you know, cuisine, community, and culture. Uh, and then set the tone for next year when we come back and uh-huh. really just, you know, try and figure out a way to really kind of, you know, make Harlem a, a culinary spotlight. You know, like, you know, I'm not trying to cause any fight with Brooklyn or whatnot, <laughs> but I think like Uptown has what it takes to be, you know, the main culinary des- uh, destination of this city, of this great city of New York. Beautiful, b- beautiful. Night Watchman, take us home. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes. it's been So Lounge Primetime, WHCR 90.3 FM, also live on YouTube and, and Facebook. And don't go away. We want to thank our guests from Uptown Nights for coming. Yes. Uh, stay with us. Uh, Harriet Cole is up next. Yes. Thank you.